as tractors have become more high-tech, the repairs have become more challenging. We do not have the ability to hook up a computer to a tractor to diagnose it, to repair it, or even to activate components that we may buy to put on that tractor, particularly with older tractors. We would, we would buy used parts and put on them to save money. And today, I can go out and there are used parts for these tractors, these newer tractors that are available. But if I put them on, the tractor won't run. I just watched this documentary, I'll put a link in the description below about John Deere is not allowing farmers to be able to, or not allowing anybody to see their programming and talk to their right. big tractors that they use on the field all the time. Right. So there are dudes that are like, basically hacking the software out of right. India or China somewhere to right. be able to read this stuff. And right. it's, going, it's going into like congressional hearings right. in the state, and I can't remember the state. But it's like, but, but they, don't, they don't want to give that right. the rights to be able to read the software up. Right. Have you, have you ran into that anywhere well, the, else? The only thing we have, Volvo is very proprietary. Like in other words, if you have the snap-on scanner you're talking about, and I don't know about this particular version, but when we try to read the Volvo cars, it, you could almost read nothing. It, all you'd have is like a code reader. That's basically all you had. You really couldn't do anything with it because so much of it was proprietary to them, and they wouldn't they wouldn't release it. Like you know, like say like on big trucks, you know, you can you can get like a J Pro, uh, which is a a program, mm -hmm. and you can read a lot of different trucks and read a lot of different things. But there's certain things you just won't because of things like what you're talking about, John Deere. It's proprietary, proprietary. to them, and that that way they own. The they got service. you by the balls, dude, because they yeah, they, the farmers have to take their right. tractors back it, to John Deere, and it's you know it, there's a wait time and then. Right. Oh, I'm gonna look at it, it's gonna be 800 bucks. I don't even know what's wrong with it, but. Right, you gotta pay for bucks. it. Yeah. No, I mean, it's the same thing. One of our customers who does striping and, you know, and stuff like that on the freeways, they, you know, you're gonna have an engine in the front that drives a truck, and there may be some sort of engine in the back. It may be for grinding or for painting or for whatever they do, and it's a John Deere motor, and they're like, hey, I can't get that truck back to me so I can make the repairs that I need to make on my end of the truck, and I'm like, why? And they're like, well, because it's over at the John Deere dealership, it's over. I shouldn't say their name, but it's over there, and whenever they get done, they get done. Because nobody else can work on it. They can't read it. They, in other words, they have quite a few mechanics, and they have lots of software on their end at the, you know, the Stripey company, it. and they can't do it. They can't touch it. And we can't help them, because we don't have anything like that. So I think that that's wrong. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I get everybody wants to make their money, but that seems kind of scandalous, you know, it does. To, to do that. I mean... If you're making a good product, you shouldn't care. But you remember the dealerships used to be like that too. Remember when Ford, when Ford and Chevy, this is a long time ago, they didn't really want to sell parts to guys like me. If they did, they wanted to crank up the price. Yeah, so it would drive that. everybody to the dealer. Then somebody got smart, and I don't know which if it was Ford or Chevy or Dodge, and they're like, hey, you know what? There's a lot of guys out there, and they're starting to buy this, this stuff, this aftermarket stuff, you know, whatever the water pump is, whatever. Why don't we make it cost effective for them? Then they're buying our stuff. And what's crazy is even now, the OEM stuff, and I buy at a pretty good rate because we buy a lot, mm -hmm. but the prices are coming down and down in OEM stuff to where you're not paying much more than you were for aftermarket. So if I can get a Ford water pump versus an aftermarket Chinese-made water pump, and we're only talking about 50, 60 bucks, I'm buying the Ford one or the Chevy one. Give me the OEM part. And I think they figured that out. And maybe one day, maybe John Deere doesn't sell enough, but one day you figure out, look, the more people that can work on them, the more people will want this tool or this machine because anybody can work on it. And then we can sell parts to you. Like, we're not going to sell parts to the customer, but John, you work on John Deere tractors. Um, wow, we could sell you, you know, $100,000 worth of parts a year. And then if we make them easy to work on, but now when John Deere gets that stigma that nobody can work on them but John Deere, if somebody else comes out with a tractor that can do what that John Deere does, John Deere may not have, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, I know you got to get out of here, Darren, and yeah. I appreciate your time. I, I really do. And we're going to put this all together. Guys, Darren, check out his website um, or just Google him, Direct Truck. And uh, thanks for watching. And um, thanks for watching, guys.